you're good what is good Ooh, the connection is not starting off on a good point straight away by the looks of it but hope you guys are doing well we are here to react obviously to inter one napoli one disappointing scoreline not the scoreline i predicted i predicted a one nil or a two nil i was expecting a drop off in performance but i was not expecting juan jesus to be scoring against us that's definitely not what i was expecting and he actually did <laughs> so this this is a big low point for our season uh juan jesus scoring for us and apparently uh the, the zone commentator even said actually fair play to him after scoring and celebrating he actually um apologized apologized for the uh, for the celebration but that's where we are a flat disappointing and tired performance from inter let's uh let's wrap it up as that let's wrap it up as that but anyway before we get into everything guys um i can see already i can see the difference look uh, i mean you guys don't see but obviously somewhere down here you can see the difference between the amount of people right here right now compared to how many people we were getting before the athletic game in the athletic game there's only 38 people today so please every one of you if you can please leave a thumbs up and subscribe but it just shows where we are in terms of the fan base at the moment just there's that feeling of um disappointment and you know some people feel like the season's almost kind of over and to be fair like i mean today's game if you didn't watch today's game you didn't really miss out on too much i'll be real um first half was good from inter second half i would say probably napoli was slightly better wastefulness as usual from inter as well though let's be real but definitely that champions league loss was still here but mainly all around in the legs and the bodies of the players um and yeah we got to talk about inzaghi in terms of zero rotation pretty much zero rotation i think the only rotation was darmian came in for dumfries so and then obviously acerbi came in for uh, De Vrij. And I think that's that's about it. That's the only rotation he went for the strongest lineup possible. And Inzaghi is not letting go with this uh, his starters. And you know, I saw this tweet. This was the starting lineup for today. This, you know, what in theory is our strongest lineup. Um, well, I will still put Dar Dumfries out of Darmian in the strongest lineup. But I saw this tweet. Shout out to M underscore Such on uh, Twitter who said, uh, you know. There's that meme that goes around about the guy that holds a burger as if his life depends on it. Uh, I don't know what it is, Popeyes or some of you Americans can tell me what burger it is, but that's basically Inzaghi and this Scudetto and him just like, come on, bro, you can you can rotate now. And I think it's not even about, I think the rotation wasn't even about like some people say that Scudetto's done and you know you need to rotate for that. It just made sense today in terms of the tiredness, um, mentally physically uh and just like now yeah we we know we're getting it close to the international break i think it's just time some of these players just need rotation guys like mkhitaryan who oh my god i can't even blame him i mean he's not playing well but i can't even blame him because it's in Zag. he just can't seem to seems like he would rather like divorce his wife than like uh give mkhitaryan some rest i really don't know um yeah yeah so disappointing kind of all the way around uh feels like with the team from last season yeah today and against atletico it, it did feel like inter from last season in terms of not taking chances and then you know some moments in the game kind of affect you and then at the back it's like you a bit more shaky than usual than we've seen this season so yeah i agree with that but amy i mean it's a slightly on a different vibe from uh from the most of us here she's um saying there's a good game into a dominant for most of the part napoli out of ucl um i think they they are already on there anyway 45 yeah they're not catching up to the others probably most likely um yeah disappointing result but fun game <laughs> maybe i mean you know what was the terms xg wise you know both teams 1.45 1.1 for uh Napoli 19. Yeah, I mean it was okay. It wasn't I wouldn't say it's a fun game. 
there was moments that you know it opened up a bit there was a bit of end to end but yeah the refereeing was quite annoying as well um i would say it was particularly that fun the ball wasn't even out they got a bs corner well actually I, i'm i'm not sure they weren't showing i don't think they showed the right um replay on that one adam um i, I know which one you mean the corner that they got but i'm pretty sure that's they showed the wrong replay because it wasn't the bastoni one that it went out it was after from um Darmian so Bastoni managed to just about keep it in gave it to Darmian and Darmian put it back and that's when it uh I think that's when it went out so I'm pretty sure well that's what they were saying on the the zone commentary that that was the wrong replay that they showed uh language talk clearly our guys still had uh, intoxication not enough time to get over it yet yeah 100 still intoxicated from that loss I guess you could say some of them are still thinking about Atletico exactly Lautaro especially yeah I mean Lautaro obviously he had that again that penalty wasn't the crucial one but it was the the last one the the, the headline one and everything was on him so I'm sure he's feeling the after effects of that still probably Bastoni fall for goal yeah Bastoni uh, basically assisted basically assisted that um that goal Matias says trash game from us Oh yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I guess. To, I guess this season we've got such high standards. Um, I guess it maybe it does go in the trash category. Um, but I, I just feel like these boys were just tired, uh, mentally and physically. Ian Kerr, Kerr Mafia in the house. Hope you are doing well, Ahmad, my brother, member for thirteen months. Really appreciate you. International break couldn't have come at a bad time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think these players. I know they go off and play more football in theory uh, with the national team, but. I think it's a good time for like some the players just to leave and like go to their respective countries and just you know have a breath of fresh air now uh, and then you know have those two weeks come back to Inter and then we go again and secure the Scudetto the second star officially great goal Wing Chun hello yeah great goal for Matty Dom's always gotta tip your cap to Matty Dom's you always criticize him in terms of you know I Every time I see him picked at the start of a right wing back, I'm just like, ah. No, I have no issue with Matteo Darmian. I love the guy. He's such an amazing signing. What a role model, professional. Uh, every team needs a Matteo Darmian. But then as a right wing back, it's just like, ah, really? But today came up, uh, came through with the goal again, which was, uh, is it his second goal this season after the Atalanta one? Uh, I believe so. He's just... Uh, Keeps uh, keeps grinding away those performances that'll probably keep him ahead of uh, Denzel. So the ref and his uh, team, yeah, the ref, as I said, um, really quite, yeah, his method. I mean, it wasn't just for Inter; like there was maybe like you know, I think Barella probably could have had a yellow card in the first half. To be honest, he just kicked uh, Traore from behind, and I think he got away with the with just a foul. Um, but yeah, some of the like Inter were on the counter attack, and especially Buchanan. Buchanan, uh, he just not just this game. It just seems like a referees in Italy are not rewarding Buchanan for what he's doing. Like he's always willing to take on his guy, and usually gets past the guy and gets fouled, and he's not getting rewarded for those. Um, but I think yeah, the referee on on both sides of things really not uh, not great, honestly. And yeah, I don't really know about the corner one. Again, I'm I'm going off what the um what the zone commentator was saying. I, I might be completely wrong, but they the, they showed the wrong replay. I think what I, what happened was they showed the wrong play, replay. It wasn't the Bastoni one that went out. It was the what the successive one from Darmian. But if not, then uh, then we got robbed. If that's true, great entertainment. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Hey, Debbie Kerr in the house as well for Kerr Mafia. Tired legs by understanding more than wants to take his truths from Atletico to this game. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really understand it. I'll be real. Um, especially seeing what the pre um previews, like we did the preview yesterday, the predicted lineups were showing a little bit more rotation. There was B sec starting. Um some reports were even indicating that Buchanan might start. Like you need you need some injection of energy and freshness of legs. Um, I understand in terms of he wants those guys to redeem themselves after that week. Um, but, you know, there's clear mental and physical tiredness from some of these guys that needs to be addressed. 
We have a striker, yeah, today, Lautaro, and to, especially Taram. Um, yeah, they're going missing at the moment in terms of goal scoring, especially Taram. Since his injury, Taram has not been the same. Um, yeah, that two or three week injury, or that, yeah, it wasn't even two weeks actually, he recovered quite quickly. But since he's come back from that injury, Taram, he's not been the same uh, for now, especially in terms of shooting. His shooting is all over the place, shots are going. Headers left, right, and center, high, wide. Yeah, not good. And um, this is the guy we signed. I mean, this is the guy I expected with Taram. He's just been, he, his overall game has been amazing at Inter. And today, even today, his, his actual overall game wasn't too bad, Taram. I was actually um, quite happy with his overall game. It was just, yeah, as soon as he had to shoot, yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty embarrassing today. But that is the guy that I expected us. To be signing in terms of his shooting and goal scoring ability maybe he overperformed a little bit at the beginning of the season on that now we're seeing the real Turan, but he definitely needs to improve a lot there um how did Roger this keep getting from all the points yeah yeah that's one i i think yeah i think with Turan is kind of like he's not a great finisher he overperformed a little bit at the beginning of the season but he's not this bad that's the thing he's not this bad he's not this bad there's definitely a, a, a middle point that Taram can reach. Um, he's not amazing. He's not clinical, but he's not this bad. Today was pretty... Every time he was shooting, it was just like you knew nothing was going to happen. In general, it always feels like that with the, with Taram. It's just kind of like, you know, he's, he's shooting... Uh, it's like Zexy. Zexy uh, is similar in terms of that. When I, when I was talking about Zexy, it's like a lot of Inter fans and a lot of players uh, people are very big fans of him and i am too on a technical level but then as soon as i see zexy shooting a lot of the times it's like p rollers of shots it's like drag them wide or just they barely reach the goal barely with any power in those shots we played well but the tendency to waste too many chances are still there yep yeah, under 100 too many yeah very sloppy in the passing a lot of mistakes lots of um little giveaways um yeah this is the worst week of the season at least behind us yeah it's true it, but that again that's the standards that we've set this season such high standards that we're going into this game expecting a win but not like just a win you know one or two two two, two three nil win with nice football um you know destroying napoli and then obviously in champions league we're expecting more but i, I like it i like it this is you know for younger fans, you might, you know, this might be new to you because you're only used to maybe the banter era and then coming through what we come through. But, you know, this is like, you know, resetting standards, you know, of Inter, like, you know, as a big team of, you know, minimum, uh, excuse me, challenging for the Scudetto and, you know, going late, later stages of Europe, like that's what Inter should be doing. So it's good to, to feel that, that we're disappointed in the in in these types of things and we're getting to that level again a cherby played yeah a cherby uh cherby played well yeah big difference between a cherby and the i hope people are seeing that now well actually it's not that big but it's just like it's a slight difference but it makes a big difference um i will never understand why Inzaghi is scared to start better left for things together yeah again i i understand i understand that um you know Fratesi is seen as the only um as only the backup to Barella or the alternative to Barella, but oof, you know, at some point you gotta you gotta rotate the team a little bit better for sure. We can't say uh, Timpy terrible. Yeah, that's one uh, I disagree. I mean, we haven't really seen much of him. And uh, as I said, the referee I think was completely uh useless on you know calling those fouls. Talking about Zaghi after this robbery again, Giovanni, I don't I, I I have no idea if that's true or not. Again, I think we, whether we were shown the right um, replay or not. I mean, let's see. Like, I haven't seen much on like on Twitter in terms of um, any controversy around it. Because again, I know that's what we see on the TV, but we were shown the wrong um, the wrong replay. Oh yeah. And yeah, the funniest thing today was, uh, you know, speaking about Inter and Atletico still maybe um, in our heads. Atletico lost today at home at the Civitas Stadium where we got 
beaten on penalties. They lost today to this Barcelona team. Well, good team. They're a good team. They beat Napoli just the other day. But they're not like an amazing Barcelona team. And they lost 3-0 to them today. So you can see in terms of physically, mentally, after a game like that, that goes to extra time, goes to penalties, um, what effect they can have on you. So, again, I'm not actually too mad about it because, you know, it can happen, especially after a game like that. And you can see what happened to Atletico straight after that. Thank you, Mattia, for reminding the people. Oh, and yes, guys, make sure you check out the uh, <laughs> the the podcast I was on. This is not actually the podcast I was on. The podcast is Milanistas360. Um, we uh, did an episode yesterday with them. They're Milanisti, unfortunately. Um, but Nico, who I think it's the person who's commenting here, he's part of that podcast. You can cut off a flower, Lucas. Is this a poem? Let me get ready to read a poem, maybe. You can cut off a flower, but that won't stop the spring from coming. Inter international success will come. For now, I just want to see Inter crush it. But yeah, this game didn't really give it to me. Yeah, I mean, in terms of international, like, the level, like, you see Champions League now, it's like, right, right now, like, if you saw all the draws, the, the there's only the big teams left, if you could say, like, you know, there's Barcelona, Real Madrid, Atletico. Um, Man City, um, who else is there? Uh, what was UCL draws? I'm just forgetting the Arsenal, Bayern, uh, Dortmund, PSG. Like, on looking at it on paper, you think, Whoa, that's all the big teams. This is like an amazing Champions League season. But when you look at the actual team, when you contextualize the, the European football at the moment, there's how many teams in this draw are you really scared of? Like, that's what gives me that. And as Lucas says, like, depending on the draw you get after you get out of that group stage, this inter team shouldn't think, like, you know, that this, you know, the Champions League final and this season was the last chance to do something in Europe. Um, no team is really impressing me too much in Europe and feels unbeatable. Um, so, as long as things stay like this, um, Inter can do something in Europe. I think Leon to show the guys from the Champions League must still have his trust. I mean, they've had his trust to the, 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 the whole season. Uh, Wing Chun, like, we in Zagi, in terms of rotation, he's not really rotated too much all season. So I don't think even if he didn't do that, that, he, that would be showing him um, giving up for those guys. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just... In, we know Inzaghi's, this is Inzaghi's best lineup in his head, and he went to continue with it. Shakir, two members for two months. Thank you very much. The strikers are letting us down lately, 100%. The, the chance taking is just um, really, really disappointing. Uh, that's what, this was what I was saying. Just uh, I can't remember what I was saying. Maybe was it two weeks ago or three weeks ago? I was saying, we were talking, what was the real big difference of Inter this season? Because obviously is the defending because the our defense what we consider what 13, 14 goals all season in Serie A, which is like probably half of what we considered last year. But is that due? Because like you know, we score, we were taking chances, and Lautaro was taking his chances at the beginning of the season. Is that the big difference? Because when he scores and we're one nil up, two nil up, and then the defense, we can defend more compact and deep, is that what's making the difference? Whereas now we're seeing Last couple of games, Inter from last couple of seasons, like you're not taking your chances. And then you get, you know, shaky at the back. You can see the goal and mentality, mentally you kind of crumble this Inter team used to under Zoggy, especially. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting what, like, when we start to miss those chances, it seems like our defending also suffers from it. Uh, it seems like we can't have, like, in, we can't have a nil-nil with this Inter team. That's the thing. Like, if we can't score, it seems like we will concede. Whereas, you know, it's you should be able, especially the way we defend it, you think that if we can't score, at least we won't let the other team score. The bright side is we can still have to away at Milan. Yeah, 100%. And we're still on the track if we want to, if we really want to um, try to break that 100-point mark. Um, this season, so we're still on track for that. Drop off second half is normal, 100 yeah, yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. And we are back to Pazza Inter. Well, I mean, not really like Pazza Inter would be like some crazy, you know, last minute result or something, you know, 
a bit more crazy. I think today was just a tired Inter or just lackluster Inter, I would say, more than Pata Inter. Uh, Matty Dams, I mean, £30. Oh, nice, fair play, Debbie. Hope you can like, get a nice, um, nice little takeaway for the family tonight, then or tomorrow. Don't freeze back to being useless two good months. Yeah, yeah, he's not been as good recently. Um, I agree, I agree. I sure I'm only real girls left giving minutes to be set for Tazin to Buchanan. Yeah, but that, I think that will happen after we clinch the Scudetto. I don't think, I think Inzaghi will continue now to just, uh, um, put out the strongest lineup possible. Worried about Barella yesterday. Yeah, Barella was not good today. Barella was not good. And yeah, just speaking about taking chances, he is shooting, is just woo, woo, whoa. I've screamed to my team like this in a long time. Anyway, we move. Hey, bro, again, the fact that on a 1 1 draw to Napoli, this is the standards we're setting this season. That, that That's showing me the growth that we've had. But I know what you mean, the, the chance taking. At us screaming at the TV. Um, yeah, I think Mickey Mikatarian definitely needs to just, uh, he needs to be rested. He needs to be rested. But we've been saying it like the whole season, like I, I, it gets tiring to talk about the same thing. Um, obviously, it's work for Inzaghi, so it's not like, you know, we can say anything about it to him. But when you get to the set, uh, you get to the stage of the season, you can see. Like you saw that with Jekyll, remember that like when we had him for the last two seasons before, he would get to his part of the season with Jekyll, his performance would just and it happens, you know, with these uh, mid 30 players, just naturally it will happen. The actual game I want to see after UCL this by is live by Liverpool was into, yeah, that would be that would be interesting, but I want to see like who is you know. Like who is by Leverkusen? Like a lot of teams can have these one season wonder. You know, Napoli. <laughs> a lot of these teams can have these one seasons. Let's see uh, what they can do next year. And without Chubby Alonso, probably most likely. Um, I don't really believe the Immobile. Um, yeah, I'm not really too keen on the Immobile the rumors. And I don't really see them um, actually being true anyway. I don't really know where those rumors came out. Matthias said he sent me a uh, message on WhatsApp. Let's have a look. Yeah. So that's the one. So Bastoni, let me see if I can actually load it up. Um, so Matthias sent me the image. So that's what I'm saying, Matthias. What I was when I was listening to the Dazone Italian commentary, he was the commentator was saying that. That's not the right replay that they showed. So the the Bastoni one. That's what you because I um to be honest, I didn't pay too much close attention to that action. So um I was kind of like setting up for the stream and stuff like that. So let me see if I can share this present, share screen. By the way, I'm not gonna be on for too long, guys. I have to go and help my dad with something today. Yeah, you can see. The ball hasn't crossed the line completely, but the zone commentator, the Italian commentator, was saying that's not the right replay. That's not the one where the ball went out. So I don't know. I don't know what the truth is. Someone needs to clear it up. Um, whether this was what, if if it was, then yeah, then we were robbed. If this is what the corner was given for, because obviously you can clearly see it wasn't a corner. And VAR, I mean, that's you know they do the silent check, so I wouldn't. I don't really understand how this would be allowed to stand if VAR is, you know, constantly doing that silent check. But I don't know if it applies to corners. That's the thing as well. But yeah, thank you for sending that, uh, Mathia. But I don't think, um, I don't think, um, well, I don't know whether that was, I, I just need to, someone to confirm that was, this was the reason why the corner was given because otherwise, yeah, we've been robbed. Since it's a collision, oh God. That last dance that never happened. I think both Summer and Buster were a bit hesitant to be the ball to the Asian build up. Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, he's not really, you know, uh, built into the to our system yet. He's kind of, you know, still fresh. So, you know, <laughs> it took a while for Barella to start giving the ball to to Dumfries. So, um, I think, yeah, it will start. It will take a while for like 
you know, Bastoni to know that if I pass the ball, he's not like Di Marco or Augusto. Like, it'll take him a while to maybe start trusting him fully in terms of that build-up. Like, if I pass the ball to this guy, I know that he's going to keep it or win a foul. That's the thing. You pass to TJ. In reality, a few of the times, he should have been winning fouls, but the referee thought otherwise. So, yeah, let's get back into the um, the screenshots. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with them. Like, <laughs> even though the rest did screw us over, I know what you mean. It's like we're, what, plus 14 now? You know, Milan won, Juve drew, nil nil to Genoa, by the way. Atrocious game. Uh, tuned in for like a few minutes, and that was a bad decision because it was put me to sleep. Um, so we're plus 14. So I know what you mean. It's just kind of like, oh, oh no, two points. Um, so yeah, here Palm says Darmian instance was the corner. That's what I keep saying. Like people don't seem to be uh, listening to me. Um, Bast Bastoni kept the ball in, and the the major error was the pen on Taram. Uh, even that one, I saw there was a slight touch on Taram. I need to rewatch that one. The the Taram, uh, I think it was Rahmani on Taram, and Rahmani um, accused Taram of diving, but there was definitely a little touch on Taram. Whether it was enough for a penalty, I'm not quite sure, but I need to rewatch that one. Anyway, going into the screenshots, analysis for the game first, before the game, look at this, guys. The players might have been thinking about the, the Atletico game, but look at this, the Curva Nord and the Interfans in general. Look at that welcome they had for the team. Players are out. The whole you know, fan base was out for them, waiting for them to give them their support. And the, the banner that you read there, Fieri di Voi, means, um, you know, proud of you for, for what you did. So really, really good support. And you can see why, you know, our fan base is, is just so good. So, so good. Amazing, amazing, amazing support. Uh, it was Merit on the Taram late punch again. Um, I need to rewatch that. But again, yeah, I was thinking since that Enzola, since the Enzola Zoma, incident every time something like that happens now i'm keeping an eye on like even if there's like a slight even if the the player the even if the goalkeeper gets the ball and then punches the player after them like you know that's what happened for us in fiorentina inter so shouldn't that be a, there shouldn't that be a penalty so yeah you might be you guys might be right on that one but again i need to see the close-up replay of that one i saw i saw it and i was thinking about that but i don't know if uh what was the like kind of the dynamics of that but that definitely could have been uh that could have been could oh it's the same referee wow wow there you go yeah no that 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 makes it even more interesting the fact that he was the guy that called it against us in the Fiorentina one that's that's funny that's funny oh come on yeah I mean, I mean we're not celebrating yeah you don't see me we're not celebrating here yet but you know, you, you gotta let it go. Some of you guys, like, you gotta let it go. Like, <laughs> I know we've, you know, there's been teams that have let leads go and inter in, ourselves in the past, we've let leads, but this is, you know, 14 points, guys. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta let it go. And there was even Perisic in the crowd, which is good to see. You know, Perisic, uh, great player, uh, you know, finished. His Inter career on a high, probably his best ever season. The Inter was his last ever season. Um, unfortunately, he had an ACL, big ACL injury last year at um, at Tottenham, and now I believe he's back in Croatia now. So, yeah, but it was always good to see Ivan there. Um, wouldn't be surprised if this guy becomes some sort of a fitness coach or some sort of coach. Um, and I wouldn't mind seeing him enter in the future, you know, after he retires to see what he does with his life after football. Um, some of the chances here, I mean, this is not like you know, clear cut chance, but you know, Napoli actually defending well in some points. There were some points here, like Joan Jesus, you know, I made fun of him in the build up, but he scored on us and he also had some moments of good defending against us actually quite a lot of times. I think he actually pocketed uh, Lautaro for being honest. Um, yeah, good cross from Di Marco, which was not a, uh, yeah, it wasn't happening throughout the game, the good crossing from Di Marco. Um, 
Lautaro gets there, but Juan Jesus blocks it. And this one was just, this is maybe where Simi was referring to earlier about um, screaming at the TV because first, um, Darmian had a completely free header. The goal, he had the goal completely empty on the right hand side, but he manages to shoot it right at uh, or like kind of towards Meret, who makes a good save. And then Lautaro on the follow up hits it straight at Meret once again. And then Barella on the follow up completely miscues it. But those were three really, really, really um, big chances and completely wasted. And that was, you know. Early or midway through the first half, and yeah, you it gave you kind of the indication that you that what kind of game this was going to end up being. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, you, you can do it, Wing Chun, bro. Like, I guess because you you teach Wing Chun, you know, a martial artist teacher, you gotta teach your, you know, your students no complacency, always go, but we. Of course, there shouldn't be no complacency, but it's impossible, humanly speaking, here to not be complacent with such a big, big lead. Now, that's an interesting one. Um, so, Juan Jesus. So there was a tweet. There's a video going around that's that's showing Juan Jesus saying to the ref that. And you can read it like a lip read. Someone put it in slow motion. I saw it on Twitter. He's saying to the referee, goes up to the referee. And he says, um, I think, oh, okay, actually, let me put it up so I don't actually misquote it. And I know you're going to scoff, you're going to scoff at the source because he's a Milanista and he's an absolute troll. Um, Saturnion Saturnion who is an absolute troll and of course he's always um, trying to you know trigger interpans but actually I, I watched the video and you can see that is what um, Juan Jesus is saying so he's saying this doesn't sit right with me he told me you are not the n-word there but you know in Italian what they what they say the uh, the kind of equivalent to that uh, and this isn't right. And then he also points to the um, the no racism um, patch on the on you know serial because it says the say no to racism or something. So he's clearly upset with it. And then the referee also calls over a cherbi, and I can see him. He's saying those words that are said here. Um, but then I also watched the post-match interview with Juan Jesus. And he said, you know, I talked to a Cherbi. A Cherbi's a good guy. He went too far with his words. And then he apologized and everything is cool. Uh, we made up and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. So I watched that because I was watching the Italian commentary of the zone. So I watched that post-match interview. But at the same time... Um, <laughs> If he has said that, I mean, this is that, that's night. That's that's like you know, that's JJ Juan Jesus putting you know, closing the statement. But and he did say that he said he went too far with his words. He probably, yeah, like this is just Juan Jesus maybe saving a Cherby's ass here. He, he probably could have put him in trouble. Um, and that doesn't it doesn't just because he said that it's all water under the bridge and. It's all fine and dandy, and he apologized. It doesn't mean that it wasn't correct, or it was correct what Acherbi did. But you know, they've resolved it there, so we'll leave it at that. But I just wanted to give you the the kind of commentary um, commentary of that. Um, yeah, but Hamoud, you know, when these incidents happen, like you know, John, when John Terry did it to uh, Anton Ferdinand in the Premier League, like how many? Uh, you know, of his teammates were also black and, you know, Suarez, Evra, like it's things like that. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, when, when people say things, they don't really think about it. Sometimes in the heat of the moment, they say really stupid shit. But yeah, again, I'm I'm not here to lie. I don't want to make a big deal out of it. Yeah, as Ian Keller see, maybe something comes out on the ref report or something. 
if they investigate it, but I'm not ready to hear just say like, oh yeah, I try to be, you know, great guy, beat cancer so he can't be racist. So let's see what comes out of it. But that's just the commentary and what kind of um just describing to you guys what happened. But between Acherbi and Ron Jesus, all sorted. So hopefully there's nothing that comes out of this too deep. And then the other screen, oh yeah, this one came out of like a Politano cross into the middle. You can um Ama Traore completely free and unmarked, really a poor header. But this could have been potentially, you know, a um a goal scoring opportunity here for Napoli. I mean, in the end, 1.45 XG against 1.12 XG is very, very close. By the same time, the Ron Jesus one is probably, yeah, look at it. It accounts for about almost half of Napoli's because it was like literally in front of the goal. So a bit of context into that. But Napoli were, and uh, you know, they were better than a lot of times I've seen them this season. Or maybe we made them look better than uh, than they were this season. Here is Darmian's goal. What a build-up. What a goal. What a cross again from Bastoni under the assist for Bastoni this season. And another goal for Matty Darms, who did actually great movement. He kind of darted, you know, did a bit of striker's movement. He darted to the kind of towards the goal first, and then he did a step back like a real striker would to get some separation from the defenders and with a weaker foot hits it first time. I think it got a little bit of a deflection as well on the way to beat Meret. Um, and yeah, really, really happy for Matty Darms getting on the score sheet once again. Another good opportunity. Well, this was more created from a distance. Di Marco shoots from about 30 yards out. Gets deflected. Uh, Meret had a good game today. We gotta, we gotta be real. A couple of, you know, Big saves for Meret on this uh, on this match. Yeah, the deflected shot from Di Marco is kind of arrowing into the corner, and he get, manages to get to it and uh, put it out for a corner. And yeah, here is the goal for Napoli. Politano crosses it in. Bastoni unfortunately heads it back towards um, Juan Jesus, who's completely unmarked. Actually, I don't know whose man is. Whether that is that Pratesi and Dumf. Freeze, I think, at the back post. Uh, it's definitely Dumfries because I saw the replay and it was Dumfries, but I don't know who's the guy in front of Dumfries. Uh, it looks like potentially Fratesi. And that's the uh, the equalising goal. Um, very, very disappointing. Poor marking and a bit unfortunate for uh, Bastoni as well. And again, the fact that Juan Jesus is the one dunking on us is makes it like a little bit more um, even more embarrassing, to be honest. But it is what it is. Um, let's finish up, guys, on, yeah, kind of a flat, disappointing match. But who was the man of the match? Uh, I do not know how the hell Mkhitaryan has 7.4 here. Um, he was, once again, disappointing. But, you know, again, I know he is tired and it's not his fault. It's Nzagi that's overplaying him. But I do not know how he's ended up with a 7.6 here. He was very, very disappointing. He should be having the same rating as Barella here, who ended up with a 6.2. Um, Barella kind of on on par with this, this whole Barella season. Look, oh my goodness, one out of eight ground deals won by Barella. Again, he's also tired, but that's pretty poor in terms of dual winning percentages. Um, and then he took a pretty harsh, strong yellow card when uh, uh, Hamid Traore... Um, yeah, <laughs> went past him, not megged him, and he just hacked him. Um, yeah, and apart from that, I think, yeah, Tur I don't know, Turan got quite a high rating, but I think, yeah, that's more than he deserves. He had a decent, as I said, I don't think his bad ma overall match was too bad, it was just his shooting was completely all over the place, but I don't think he was that much better than Lautaro. I thought Lautaro, there was a few nice link-up moments for Lautaro today. Uh, but yeah, his shooting, not as good as it has been this season. Um, Yeah, who are we giving the man of the match to, guys? Who are we giving the man of the match to? Oh, oh yeah, that stat that's been going the whole season. No, concede, no goal conceded after the 70th minute, 75th minute. It's over. 
and it's taken until match day 29. Wow. Moment of applause for this team for being able to do that, keep that record until uh, until today. Yeah, I really don't know, guys. Who, who the hell is the man of the match? I don't really know. I have no idea. You guys let me. Yeah, I'll pick I'll pick the guy that you guys picked today. I have no, like, real standout kind of it. Um, obviously, he fought more with giving it to Darmian just because of his goal. But even Darmian, I wasn't particularly too impressed with this game either. Um, but he did well with Kavara in general, as always. Um, in which position would you upgrade this inter team to compete with top teams? Well, it's, it's more about the depth, isn't it, with this inter team? I think the the, the big, and of course, I think it's you know that right wing back position. Even when we signed Dumfries, it was always you know the improvement can always be made on that right wing back position. Um, with Zielinski coming in and Taremi coming in, we were dressed striker. Maybe one more striker would be good to replace, you know, Sanchez or Arnautovic if, they, if we managed to get rid of them. Those are the positions. And of course, a long term, a Cherby replacement, maybe. Those would be my um, go to if we had money to invest for sure. Yeah, Bastoni's performance was good. Yeah, it was. Um, but then, yeah, a bit shaky in that, you know, the fact that the corner, but he also led to the corner, Ian, because he was, I don't know what he was doing for that that move there. It was a bit shaky. That led to Darmian conceding that corner afterwards and then his flick on. But yeah, in general, it was some nice moments, defensive moments as well, aside from the assist from Bastoni, which is always what I look at. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I don't really understand it. Like, this season is still a massive success to me. This is what I wanted at the beginning of the season. This is what I wanted. I wanted second star, 20 Scudetto, Champions League. I was hoping for quarterfinal. That was my prediction. But, you know, we got out at the round of 16. But one less round in the Champions League is not... I'm not losing sleep over it. And then Coppa Italia, I didn't care about this year. Supercoppa, I didn't care about it. And we've got it, Supercoppa. So, overall, still really really good season for me um Matteo said you still give it to Bastoni no yeah, not just any striker this one will be good yeah of course <laughs> not just any striker please uh Basto was good yeah he was he was good he was good Bastoni but because of his role to play in the goal conceded uh with the corner and then the flick on as well I don't know, but if you guys, if you guys are feeling, if you guys are feeling Bastoni, I'll, I'll give it to Bastoni. Um, let's give it to Doms, yeah. Let's give it to Doms. Go. And this is Matty Doms. You can never go wrong with Matty Doms, can you? Um, Carboni is fourth choice. Nah, not really. Uh, that boy. We need to figure out where his position is first. Unfortunately, that boy in modern football. It's uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see what position he actually uh, thrives in, whether it's as a Medzala or as a... In, in our formation, there's only two places he can play, Medzala or second striker. But he doesn't look like either of those at the moment. So, yeah, it's let's see how things develop for him. Um, and with Inzaghi as well, is there really point of keeping a guy if Inzaghi is not going to trust him and give him minutes. That's the, always the thing with young guys. Yes, it's nice to say, like, you know, we should be having young guys as rotationals, but it looks like Inzaghi is not really the coach uh, to make that happen for us. The fans were man of the match. Okay, yeah, let's do that. No man of the match today. Let's go with Interisti, especially the ones today at the stadium, but of course you guys as well at home. Tuning into this game after that heartbreak in the Champions League, we are the man of the matches. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Basto and Doms were okay. Oh, yeah, did you guys see? Of course, the uh, Pavard had the uh, he got the Inzaghi yellow card treatment. Um, B said, Yeah, he was good as usual coming on as a sub. Well, you know, he got subbed out as soon as he got his yellow card. Um, so he's learning the Inzaghi yellow card. Uh, pathological condition as well but anyway thank you guys for tuning in hope you enjoyed that 45 minutes um i need to go today i need to help my dad with something um yeah we let Juan Jesus score um but we remain first 
14 plus 14 points on Milan. Uh, Juve didn't win today, which is always nice to see. Uh, and next up, we've got what we got Empoli. Yeah, we've got Empoli on April the 1st. So we've got a bit of a gap now, international break. Um, but don't worry, content will still be happening on the channel. Um, I just need to think about what, of course, maybe start doing some potential scout reports for the players that are coming in next year, like Tarami, like Zielinski, um, maybe some other videos, Serie A-related videos in general, or maybe some Italia Azuri-related videos. But yeah, keep a look on the channel. Leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Ciao ragazzi, always, always, Forza Inter. Maybe it wasn't Limone Ball today. We didn't enjoy, but we are bringing that second star home soon. So mission second star continues. Ciao ragazzi, Forza Inter.